Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So in the previous lecture we have discussed the process of the Gram-Smith that how we are able to convert the given set of linearly independent vectors into the orthonormal vectors. So today we will discuss uh, the application of that one. So let us take uh, the example that how we can proceed with the Gram-Smith process. So suppose I have a vector space R3 and I have the basis, I am taking the basis as 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 1. So this is the basis I am taking. basis of R3. Now from there the process is that the question is that convert it into ortho normal basis using Gram Smith process. So now, so I call it maybe I, I will call it V1, V2, V3. So these are three vectors I am taking. So let us take U1. So it is V1 divided by its magnitude. So it is v1 so from here v1 is 110 and its magnitude is 1 plus 1 under the root so it will become 1 by root 2 110 so that is my vector u1 is a normalized vector so it is a step 1. Now step 2, I want to make another vector. So I will uh, write my y2. So it is my v2 minus taking the dot product of v2 with u1 into u1. So my v2 is a vector that is a column vector we always represent by this one minus. So, I am taking the dot product of V2 with U1. So, V2 is basically I can write here like V2 is 0, 1, 1 taking the dot product with 1, 1, 0 root 2. So, this is my dot product and then U1 is I can call it maybe 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0. So how I am going to solve this one is that this vector minus, so I am taking the dot product of this. So 1 by root 2 I can take common no problem. So I from here it is 1, 0, so 0, 1, 1 and 0. So if you see from here this will become 1 by root 2 and then 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0. From here I can write this will become equal to 0, 1, 1 minus, so 1 by root 2 I can take inside, so it will be 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 0 and I am subtracting this vector and this vector. So, component wise I will subtract. So, it becomes minus 1 by 2, 1 minus half it will be 1 by 2 and 1 minus 0 it will be 1. So, I am getting this vector. So, that is my y2. So, I am getting this value. Now, from here I will write my u2. So, I will take this vector as minus half, half 
to 1 because this is how we can find from here divided by its magnitude. So, it will be 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 root. So, it is 1 plus 1 2 plus 4 6 by 4. So, it is I can write as minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 1 divided by. So, it is 6 by 4. So, 3 by 2 root 2. So, that is my uh, u 2. So, this is a normalized vector. Now, from here So, I am able to get my u 1 is basically this is the vector 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0 and I will to get u 2. So, u 2 is this one root. So, I can write from here. Now, I can write minus 1 by 2 into root 3 and root 2. Now, from here if I multiply by this one I can write as minus root 2 by 2 into root 3, I will multiply by root 2 and root 2. So, this will, will cancel with this one and it will become minus 1 by uh, root 6. So, this one I can write as root 6. So, I can write from here minus 1 by root 6, then 1 by root 6 and in the end it is 1. So, it is just I am writing here root 2 by 3. So, from here I can write 2 by root 3 because it is 1 by and this one I can write so I multiply by root 2 and root 2 so root 2 into root 2 2 so I can write this as this one so I can write from here this one this is my u 2. Now, I will write my next vector y 3. <coughs> so, this will be v 3 minus I am taking the per, uh, component of v 3 with u 1 into u 1 plus v 3 taking the component with u 2 u 2 and that will be equal to. So, v 3 I have taken 0 0 1. So, it is 0 0 1 and I know that these vectors are linearly independent. Now, from here I get 0 0 1 minus now I am taking the dot product of V 3 with U 1. So, it is 0 0 1. So, it will be I am taking with u 1 the v 3. So, v 3 is so it will be v 3. So, it will be 0 plus v 3 with v 2. So, it is v 3 with dot taking the dot product. So, it will be 2 by root 6 into my u 2. So, that u 2 is, so I am taking the dot product. So, it is just 2 by root 6 and then it is again the whole vector that is minus 1 by root 6, 1 by root 6 and 2 by root 6. This is what I got. From here I can write is as 
0 0 1 minus now I can multiply by this. So, I can just take inside. So, it will be 2 into 6. So, it will be minus because it will be minus 2 by 6. So, it will be minus 1 by 3. Now, it will be 2 by 6. So, it will be 1 by 3 and it is 2 into 2 4 by 6. So, that will be 4 by 6. So, it is 2 by 3 this one and from here I get this value this vector will be so this minus this so it will be 1 by 3 this minus this it is minus 1 by 3 and 1 minus 2 by 3 is 1 by 3. So, that is my y 3. So, this is my y 3. Now, from here I can find my u 3. So, u 3 I am just taking this vector 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 1 by 3 and divided by its magnitude. So, its magnitude will be 1 by 9 plus 1 by 9 plus 1 by 9 under the root. So, 3 by 9 under the root and this is 1 by 3 root 3. So, it is 1 by uh, root 3. Now, from here I can write see 1 by 3 divided by 1 by root 3. So, I am getting my root 3 above and from here I can write this as 3 So, from here it becomes 1 by root 3 because I just multiply by root 3 and divide by root 3. So, this can be written as this one and from here is 3. So, that will cancel out this. So, from here I can get this vector as 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 and 1 by root 3. So, this is my vector uh, u 3. So, from here my u 3 become minus 1 by root 3 and 1 by root 3. So, let us ch check that. Now, we are able to get 3 vectors. So, this is my u 1, u 2 and u 3. Now, I want to check that whether they are linearly uh, they are orthogonal to each other or not. Now, from here we can see that if I take u 1 it is a no problem. Now, if I take u 1 dot u 2. So, this is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 6 plus 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 6 and last is. So, it is cancel out. So, that is 0. Now, u 1 dot u 3. So, u 1 dot u 3 it becomes 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 3 because it is a negative sign and third is 0. So, this is also cancel out become 0. <coughs> now, I take u 2 u 3. So, u 2 u 3 is minus 1 by so, I am taking 6 into 3 18 minus 1 by 18 because this is negative sign plus 2 by 18 and that will be 0. So, they are orthonormal to each other and of course, they are uh, their magnitude is 1 because it is 2 4 plus 1 plus 5 uh, plus 5 plus 6. So, if I take this one its magnitude is 1, its magnitude is 1 and its magnitude is 1. So, from here we can say that now the set I call it this one. So, I represent by 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 0 
and then minus 1 by root 6 2 by root 6 and the third one is 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 and 1 by root 3. So, this is is an ortho normal basis of R 3. So, we have changed the basis from B that is the linearly independent basis to the orthonormal basis that is the another basis of R 3. So, you can also that this is change of basis. Now, after doing this one what we are going to do is I am going to use this uh, basis in another form and that we are going to discuss is now what I am going to write is from here if you see then so after doing this one i will just write the matrix i represent this matrix by q so in the q what i am writing i am writing this column this vector as column vector minus 1 by root 6 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 and 1 by root 3. And I know from here that these are orthogonal to each other. This is 3. Now, because the columns are orthogonal to each other, even I represent by this this is my R 1, R 2, R 3. So, I can take my dot product with R 1, R 2. So, it will be 1 by 2 minus minus 1 by 6 minus 1 by 3. So, this is it can be written as so I can take the LCM over here. So, it is 6. So, it is 3 minus 1 minus 2. So, 3 minus 3 by 6. So, it is 0. So, R 1 is orthonormal R 1 dot R 3 we can take. So, this is again minus 2 and minus 2. So, that will be also 0 and R 2 dot R 3 that is also orthogonal to each other because here it can be 2 by 6 minus uh, 1 by 3. So, it is 0. So, from here I can say that my q is is an orthogonal matrix. Now, what we are going to do is that now we have the basis. So, for the R 3 we have two basis b that is my v 1, v 2, v 3 and we have another basis s that is my u 1, u 2, u 3. Now, I know that this is the orthogonal basis. So, I can write my v 1 as linear combination of the, the standard this uh, orthogonal basis u 1, u 2, u 3. How I can write? I can write v 1 as v 1 dot u 1 u 1 plus v 1 dot u 2 u 2 plus v 1 dot u 3 u 3. Similarly, I can write my vector v 2 as v 2 dot u 1 u 1 v 2 dot u 2 u 2 and v 3 dot or uh, v 2 dot u 3 u 3 that we have already discussed and similarly v 3 is v 3 taking the dot product with u 1 
v3 taking the dot product with u2 and v3 taking the dot product with u3. This system, this can be written as, so I take a matrix with first column, second and third. So, this is the matrix basically we have which is made up of the basis, the linearly independent basis. I can call it this matrix A. So, this can be written as, now I can write this as u1, u2, u3. So, that is I am taking u1, u2, u3 here. So, we call it Q and then I can have a matrix here. This can be written as v1 dot u1 then v1 dot u2 and v1 dot u3 because this one we can multiply by this one I will get this value. Now v2 dot u1 v2 dot u2 and v2 dot u3. Similarly, I can have v3 taking the dot product with u1, v3 taking the dot product with u2 and v3 taking the dot product with u3. Now, from here I know that this v1 is u1, so no problem. But what about v1 dot u2? I know that v1 is perpendicular to u2. So, from here if you see, so I this is another matrix, but from here you can see that this value is equal to 0, because my u2 is definitely perpendicular to u1 and u1 in the direction of v1. So, it is perpendicular. Similarly, my v3 and u3, v1, u3 are 0. So, this is also 0. Now, in the next one v2 dot u1, v2 dot u2 and v2 dot u3 that is 0. So, this is equal to 0. Now, this is okay. v 3 dot u 3, because now v 2 dot u 1 and v 2 dot u 2 and v 3 dot u 1, v 3 dot u 2 and v 3 dot v 3. So, if you see from here all this value will be there, but this value will be 0. So, and it is a 3 cross 3 matrix. So, I can call this matrix R and this is I can know from here this is upper triangular matrix. because here it is v2 with u1 no problem v2 with u2 no problem so this is it can be some values but this value definitely it will be zero so this is a matrix that is called the upper triangular matrix so from here if you see i have written my matrix a as q this is made up of orthogonal basis into r so this is called Q R factorization of matrix A. Now, from based on this one, we will take the idea of another important topic that is Q R factorization. Or we also call it Q R decomposition. So, what is this? 
So, let we have a vector space V, V be a vector space and I call it the dimension of V is suppose n. So, now I take the basis of V. So, let B is the basis that is V 1, V 2, V n. So, this is the basis. Then we take the orthogonal basis that is u 1, u 2, u n. So, this is what we have seen. So, this is a basis of V and this is a orthonormal basis of V. So, these are the orthonormal basis that we have taken from with the help of Graham Smith. Now, based on this one, we can write again. So, now we can write V 1 as again we can write V 1 taking the dot product with U 1, U 1, V 1 taking the dot product with U 2, U 2 and in the end V 1 with U n taking the dot product with U n. In the end we can have my V n as V n dot U 1, V n dot U 2 and V n dot U n, U n. So, from here I can write my matrix with V 1 column vector V 2 V n. It can be written as U 1 U 2 U n and then we can have a matrix that is I can write as v 1 dot u 1, this is a dot product we are taking v 1 dot u 2 v 1 dot u n. So, this is a dot product we are taking, we understood. Now, from here I can write again, so this is v 1, so I can write the same thing with v 2. v 2 dot u n and in the end we will get v n dot u 1, v n dot u 2 and v n dot u n dot product. Now, this matrix is my matrix corresponding to the given basis, I call it A. This is a matrix corresponding to the orthogonal basis that is my Q and this matrix if you see now from here in this matrix. So, this matrix I can write here that from here it is for Now, V i dot u j. So, this is equal to 0 for j is greater than equal to 2 okay. and where i is 1, 2 up to j minus 1. So, that is there. So, if you use this one then you will see that this matrix is an upper triangular matrix because here we are talking about the vector space of dimension n. So, this matrix will be of order n cross n, this will be also of order n cross n and this will be also of order n cross n because we know that when the matrix is a square matrix only then we can talk about upper triangular matrix. So, from here we get my matrix A is equal to Q R. Now, my Q is is an orthogonal matrix.
now I can find the r because here I know the value of a, I know the value of q. So, I should be able to get the value of r directly from there. Now, it is a orthogonal matrix. So, I can take the inverse. So, q inverse a I can write as r. Now, I know that the q inverse is equal to transpose because it is a orthogonal matrix. And from here, I can write that the q transpose a it can be written as equal to r. So, now with the help of q and a we are able to find the r. So, this is my upper triangular matrix and from here this is called the process is called the q r factorization. So, it means I am able to factorize my given matrix A into product of two matrix that is Q and R and Q is the orthogonal matrix corresponding to the orthonormal basis and R is my upper triangular matrix. So, this is uh, all we can discuss about the Q R factorization and we can also verify uh, this one with the for the given matrix the Q and R. So, that things uh, we will discuss in the next lecture. So, in this lecture uh, we have discussed the another important concept that is the Q R factorization that in the for a given matrix we can convert this matrix into the or we can factorize this matrix in the form of Q and R. And, uh, in the next lecture, we will discuss some uh, MATLAB commands or octave commands that how we can verify these things very easily in the software like uh, MATLAB or octave. So, uh, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much.